May 20, uh, May 22nd, 23rd, 24th, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's the weekend! And I want to give a little happy birthday to Deborah Silverman, who has Deborah Silverman Astrology, which is a channel where she makes a lot of really informative videos. Um, about the different signs, and she acts them out, as well as the elements, does planet videos, does horoscopes of wood, the sun, moons, and that, like I'm doing right now, anxiety and astrology, and, um, horoscope basics, and there's a lot of other things going with that as well, so definitely, you know, she, she makes it very simple and, you know, really fun to understand, so I would definitely check out her channel, and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be linking in the description box. I'm going to be linking her channel, that way you can go and, you know, watch her videos. Um, and see why she is, you know, a Gemini herself. But so anyway, May 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. So, the sun and the moon are in Gemini. It's double mutable, double air, double Gemini. People born under both sun and moon are born under a dark sky, and it's more of an introvert. You know, it's, you know, it's more, it's not like you think. It's more of an introverted, I mean, you know, going in, and I wonder if Idina Menzel has this. She was born on the 30th of May. But, so anyway, the sun and the moon are in Gemini. So, we've already talked about the sun being in Gemini and the moon being in Gemini. So, this is the best time to write, to read, to speak, to teach, to watch movies and skits and, um, you know, to really have a conversation and get to know people. Although, there is some exceptions to that because of the you-know-what. But, Zoom, um, all the social medias, all of those things are great. And that would really channel the flavor of Gemini. And, you know, Gemini basically isn't a whole lot um, that you can do for that. And I basically talked about it. So, Moon and Gemini, you know, the Moon represents the emotion, and it's one sign behind the Moon's ruling sign. So, um, with the Moon being in Gemini, which is emotions, your emotions, um, you can really, you know, express your emotions. Um, you know, and the, you know, and the emotions go to wanting to talk, wanting connection. Wanting to, um, you know, I'm um, just that emotion through reading, through speaking. And maybe someone born under this can really feel it when they're talking. Um, and can really express how they feel through talking as well. So the double Gemini question is, how can I, um, you know, and, you know, I mean, just the lesson for double Gemini is finding a way to ground myself because the Gemini is so interested in all these little different topics and always needs the stimulation and gets bored easily and can, you know, just talks and talks and talks and all that kind of thing, you know, very, very, you know, incredibly social. Allowing the Gemini to slow down, create a structure and routine and sameness and how to find something and, you know, stick to it and like it, which is through Taurus. So Taurus and Gemini um, can get along very, very well in relationship, not because they're so similar, but because they're very, very different, and each of them has something that the other lacks. And so the Taurus can do to the Gemini, you know, what the Gemini can do to the Taurus. You know, the Gemini can... You know, you know, get it's out of routine, and the Gemini can, um, you know, allow it to change itself, and allowing it to explore and try new things and 
talking more and putting on more of the fun factor. And Taurus, you know, I already told you before, grounding the Gemini and stabilizing it. But that's more on the other horoscope. Now, the next video is a very, very emotionally, talkatively expressive combination. I'll see you then. Um, and don't forget, check out Deborah Silverman as